outside of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now, let's have a wild welcome for... Your furry friends, Stinky and Jay! Hello, all you little animals out there. I am Stinky. And I am Jake. And today we're going to meet a bighorn sheep and a red deer. Those are the animals with things growing out of their heads. Well, not things, hmm? Stinky. The bighorn has horns and the red deer has antlers. Oh, what do they do with them? Is it to hang their hats? <laughs> no, Stinky, it's not to hang their hats. Oh, their laundry. Well, it's not to hang their laundry either. They use oh. their horns and antlers to... Well, they're very good for, uh... You, you don't know, do you? Well, uh, I'm not really sure. But uh, you are Jake, font of all wisdom! You must know! Uh, well, Stinky, I, I don't know everything. You don't? Now I'm confused. How about you? <laughs> well, we'll meet the bighorn and the red deer right after this. Uh, listen, are you sure you're Jake? Sure you're... <laughs> and now it's time for... That's amazing! <laughs> The head-butting muskox. These muskoxen can hit heads with great force, but not knock each other out. Their heads are made for it. Oh, that's much. <laughs> the head-butting muskox. Yeah, another animal that'll give you a headache and make you say, yeah. That's amazing! Hey, are you really Jake? Of course. But Jake always knows the answer to everything. Oh, except Tizzy's quizzes. Well, true, <laughs> but why don't you know about horns and antlers? Well, I'm a polar bear. Polar bears don't have horns or antlers. Well, then how are we going to find out what they're for? We could ask our guests. Ooh, he might be Jake after all. Let's bring on our first guest from across the mountains and deserts of North America. America. Rocky the Bighorn Sheep. Sheep. It's real flat around here. <laughs> I'm used to the hills, but mm. this is what I call flat. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, Rocky. I'm Jake. You're so he says, and I am Stinky. Oh, hi, you guys. Gee, uh, why is it so flat around here? <laughs> oh, well, that, that's probably because we're not on a mountain. <laughs> Whoa, I bet you that's it. Oh. You see, where I come from, Jake. it's all mountainy. Yeah. yeah. I'm what is known as a mountain bighorn sheep. Ooh, because you live in the mountains? Uh, right, yeah. Uh, there are also desert bighorn sheep, right, Rocky? That's right, yeah. And you know, I noticed something. Your yeah. backside is white. I beg your pardon? Uh -oh. well, your backside is white too, mister. No, no, no. I mean, polar what? bears are, are, are all white, but bighorn sheep are just white on their backside. Does, does that mean anything? Oh, you mean our white backside, of course. Uh, that's a warning to other members of our herd. When there's danger and we run off, other big horn will see the white and know it's time for them to turn tail and run. Well, uh, sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, really not himself today. Uh, but, but what we really want to know about, Rocky, is your horns. Oh, my horns. You noticed. Yeah, Jake has no idea what you use them for. Well, neither oh. do you. Hmm? Oh, uh, a big horn's horns are very important. Why, if we didn't have these horns, they couldn't call us big horns. Yeah, they'd have to call you no horn sheep. Right again, Stinky. <laughs> but you. you must use them for something else. I mean. Oh, of course. Well, just watch. Here are a big horn about to hit heads. Oh, yeah. that's got to hurt. Well, it would if we didn't have these horns. Oh, so you have horns so you can hit heads with each other. Yeah, but why do you want to hit heads with each other? Oh, I, I used to know the answer to this one. Oh, uh, I guess you hit your head too many times. Oh, wait, wait, I know. Uh, we do it as a test of strength. And what's that bighorn sheep doing? Oh, uh, he's got an itch. He's scratching it. Well, that's what I thought, too. Uh, anything else you want to know about bighorn sheep, Jake? Well, yes. Uh, I'm curious about whether you do anything else with your horns. Oh, well, of course we do. Uh, just watch. Yeah, there they go. Whoa, that's neat. Yeah, but what exactly are they doing? Well, two bighorn will lock horns like that and run side by side. It's another test of strength. Oh, it's like headbutting. Another way to figure out who's the leader of the herd. Right. One bighorn pushes one way and the other tries to push the other way until somebody gives up. It's kind of like arm wrestling, only with horns. <laughs> Whoa, I, I never thought of it that way, Stinky. Where do you come up with stuff like that? That's a gift. Uh, <laughs> different bighorns seem to have different size horns. Are, are those other ones small horn cheap? Oh, no. You see, we start growing our horns when we're young, and they keep growing through our whole life. Yeah, the older the sheep, the bigger his horns. 
Uh, the biggest horns anyone ever saw were 33 inches across. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, they belong to my grandfather, Dempsey. Mm. Now, mm. isn't a boy bighorn called a ram? Hmm. Right, yeah. Well, what's a girl bighorn sheep called? You. Uh, me? No, 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 you. Uh, well, that's what I said, me. Uh, no. Why would anybody call a girl bighorn stinky? I mean, it's a no. nice name, Stinky, but... stinky, not you, you. You see, it, it's spelled E-W-E, and, and you is what a female bighorn sheep is called. Okay, if you say so. Yeah. Well, well, thanks for coming, Rocky. Yeah, thank you, Rocky. Oh, sure, fellas. I'll see you coming around the mountain <laughs> when you go. <play. laughs> and now it's time for some other animals who are coming around the mountain on Baby Talk. Have you finished chewing yet? No, Ma. Not yet. Almost. No hurry, dear. You know the first rule of climbing. Yeah, never chew and climb at the same time. Yeah. Climb, climb, stop. Chew, chew, climb, climb, stop climbing. Chew. Whoa, chewing safer. I'm going down, okay? This way, kid. Oh. Are you sure this is right, Mom? Oh, of course I'm sure. And if you're not chewing, don't stop, child. You're right. Don't stop. I'd rather go down than up, that's for sure. Hey, Ma, why'd you stop? I found a nice, safe place to chew. Oh, great. Here I come. Being a mountain goat is tops, don't you think? Oh, you said it. <laughs> If you're really Jake, you'd be able to tell me what's coming up next. Coming up next is a song about antlers and horns. We'll see. I told you it was going to be a song about antlers and well, horns. Yeah, but that might have just been a lucky guess. Oh, and speaking of lucky guesses, here comes another quiz from Tizzy. Tizzy's here. Oh, we're ready for the quiz, Tiz. As ready as we ever are. <laughs> here it is. Guesses? Nope. How about you? Nothing. Mm, don't tell me. You need to hear the question again. Oh. How did she know that? Mm. <laughs> oh, the question. Which one of these animals lives higher than any others? And the answer is... The yak. It lives in the Tibetan Plateau, as high as 20,000 feet above sea level. Be latest, because it's true. Yaks live way up on the very highest mountains in a country called Tibet. They live between 18 and 20,000 feet above sea level. And believe me, that's high! <laughs> There's not a lot of air to breathe high up in the mountains, so yaks take it nice and slow. It's very cold, so yaks have nice, thick coats to keep them warm, especially the babies. The macaques, or Japanese snow monkeys, live in the mountains of northern Honshu in Japan. No other primate lives higher up than the macaque. They have to dig into the snow to find their food. And they 
keep warm by sitting in hot thermal springs. Believe it. Okay, do you know what's coming up now? Well, smells like Eve St. LaRoche's cooking. Well, that was an easy one. Here's Eve. Eve and cheese, my pet. I love her six legs and all. Oh! <laughs> Just practicing my accordion. <clears throat> well, bonjour, bonjour, mon petit animals. You know, today I was planning to prepare a special meal for my good friend, the red deer. Hmm. C'est... <clears throat> C'est magnifique, oui. Mm. You see, red deer just love to eat flowers. But then I decided, why give these flowers to the red deer when I can give them to my girlfriend, the vet? No, oui. <laughs> I will call her. <laughs> oh, mon chéri. <laughs> Wait until you see this fantastic bouquet of flowers I got. <laughs> <laughs> We, oui, your sweetie Eve's got mm. them for you. They are so beautiful, so mm. fragrant, so much like you, my dear. Dear, Yvette. Um, on second thoughts, forget it. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, bon appétit, uh, and remember, you can say so much with flowers. <laughs> Dear. And now it's time to meet our next guest. And finally find out what antlers are mm. for. And here he is, all the way from Scotland. Scotland. Robert the Red Deer. Mm. Mm. Oh, those were really good flowers. Uh, not as good as the heather back home, but uh, I'll have to have some more when we're done. Uh, yeah. Welcome, Robert. Yeah, hiya, Robert. Uh, it's not Robert, it's Robert. <laughs> Robert. Aye, that's much better. Now, what would you like to know about Red Deer? Uh, where do you live? Oh, well, that depends on the time of year. You see, in the summer, oh. we Red Deer live up in the hills, above where the trees grow. And in the winter? Well, we head down the hills and seek shelter and food amongst the trees. We love a good meal of grass or shrubs or flowers. Whoa! Did that Red Deer eat some flowers that disagreed with him? Oh, no, Stinky. That's a male deer. He's called a stag, and that stag is letting female deers know he's out there. A female red deer is called a hind, right? Right. All right, Jake, you finally got one. Aye, and between August and October, when the red deers are mating, you can hear the stag calling across the glen. Listen to those roars. Aye. Whoa, they're cool. Aye, and I've got a pretty good roar myself. Would you like to hear it? Well, actually, uh... Well, here goes. <laughs> Oh, is there anything else you'd like to know about red deer? Uh, what? what? I said, is there... Oh, never mind. I'll tell you about my antlers. Uh, what oh. we'd really like to know about is your antlers. Oh, my antlers. My pride and joy. Hmm. Oh, there's a fine-looking red deer. Hey, what's that deer doing? Oh, he's just rubbing the soft velvet off his antlers. You see, we use our antlers to knock leaves off trees. In winter, we need all the leaves we can get. Now, I noticed that different red deer have different size antlers. Aye, that's because when a red deer gets older, it grows antlers with more points. Mm. An older deer can have as many as eight points on their antlers. Whoa, Ooh. what happened to that red deer? Did he get into a fight? Oh, no, that, that deer just dropped its antlers, yes. We lose our antlers each summer. Oh, well, well, I guess that's the difference between horns and antlers. Mm. Animals with horns grow only one set, mm. but animals with antlers grow new ones each mm. year. Good guess, Jake. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know anything about horns. We red deer only grow antlers. We use them to find food. Oh, and we do enjoy our antler wrestling. Oh, now when red deer do that with their antlers, do they hurt each other? Oh, not usually. There might be a few sore neck muscles, but all that antler wrestling is just so one deer can show the other who's tougher, and that way they know who will lead the herd. Oh, I guess that one gave up. Only for a wee while. It's powerful good being a red deer, to live in the hills, to run free in the open country. Hmm. You know, it makes me want to roar. Oh, yeah. Wait! Oh, oh, oh. Wouldn't you rather sing instead? Yeah. That's a... Fine idea. Oh, oh. Oh, uh, oh. And now here's Robert the Red Deer with the Red Deer Song. Mm. 
Can you hear the red deer calling, calling from the mountain high? Can you hear the old stag roaring? Can you hear his lonely cry? Can you see beyond the heather as the herd goes on its way? Can you see the old stag guarding, warning all to keep away? Deep well then a forest clearing to despite to claim their prize. Far away beyond their hearing a lonely bugler rents the skies. Can you hear the winner calling, calling to his lady dear? A bugle call to say I love you Floating in the air so clear Great song, Robert! Remarkable, Robert! Thank you. Thank you, lads. See you later. Who, Robert has cool antlers. Well, today they're up for an animal award. Go, Robert! And now it's time for... Animal Award! Which of these animals has the biggest antlers? Oh, is it the red deer? The moose? Uh -huh. Or could it be the caribou? <laughs> in third place, the red deer. Ah, in second place, the caribou. And the animal with the largest antlers almost six feet wide is the moose. Congratulations! Yeah, and uh, better luck next time there, Robert. You know, the Jake I know and love tells great stories. Oh, Stinky, I am Jake. Well, then how come you aren't telling me a story? I was just about to. Oh, well, then go ahead. Thanks. <clears throat> Once upon a time, on top of a rocky hill, there was a mountain goat named Gordon. Now, one day, Gordon noticed that all the other mountain goats he knew were spending a lot of time licking rocks. They'd climb a little, like mountain goats do, and then they'd just stop and start licking rocks. Well, Gordon realized that all his friends were doing it. They all said it was very good for a mountain goat's hooves. Gordon thought, if rock licking is good for my hooves, then I better get out there and lick rocks. So he set off from his hill to find a rock to lick. And the first one that he tried, well, it was too gravelly and dry. And it certainly didn't make his hooves feel any better. Then Gordon found another rock to lick. Now, it wasn't easy to reach that rock, but it made his hooves feel fantastic. Now I know why mountain goats lick rocks, said Gordon. And now Gordon is up on his hill licking rocks with all the other mountain goats. The end. Oh, good story, Jake. Thanks. Yeah, whoever you are. <laughs> Stinky. Hmm? <laughs> it's habitat time! So, are you ready, Armstrong? I'm not going. Oh, of course you are, Armstrong. No, I'm, I'm staying here. I'm not going. I look stupid. <gasps> oh, you love it at the top of the mountain! No, I won't. I, I, I can't breathe up there. I told you! <clears throat> You'll be able to breathe with this oxygen mask. No. Come on, take a few deep breaths. <sighs> <sighs> Great! All right, come on, Armstrong. We are going to the top of a mountain. Look at the beautiful mountains down there. So majestic, so still. Uh, so, Ali, uh, there's something I have to tell you. What, Armstrong? I'm afraid of heights. Oh, don't be silly, Armstrong. Oh. You're a bird. You're used to being up in the clouds. I know. A lot of animals live up here, like that mountain bighorn sheep. Oh, yeah, he looks like Rocky, huh? Mm. Yeah. And there's a great gray owl. Who? There, can't you see her? Oh, yeah, no, I was trying to talk to her. Who? Who? <laughs> Listen, she Who? can't talk. She's got to stay on her eggs so they won't freeze. Great grays build their nests early in the year in the snow. 
Oh. oh, hey, I wonder where that guy got his coat. He looks warm. That's a porcupine, Armstrong, and he grew his own coat. Oh, shh, shh, shh. Listen, listen, Ollie. Listen. Oh, it's a wolf howling. Look, those wolves hear it, too. Oh, that is eerie. There's a cougar, also known as a mountain lion. It's probably looking around for some small animal to eat. <laughs> Not a chicken hawk, I hope. <laughs> Are we? Over here, Armstrong. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Look, a brown bear. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh no, a fight. Brown bears and mountain lions don't usually pay much attention uh, to each other, except when they both want to eat the same food. Uh, Ollie, I think we better get out of here before they decide that a chicken hawk and a taper would be the perfect solution to their problem. But Armstrong, look, it's so beautiful here. Sorry, Ollie, I am out of here. Look at this lovely view, and it's so high. No, it's up. not that lovely. Look. Let's go. <sighs> going, going. Whew. For habitat time, this is Ollie the tapir. Yeah, and I'm starting to chicken out. Mm -hmm. Boy, my happy we're back. Mm -hmm. Just back from the top of a lovely, beautiful, high mountain. Yeah, and uh, still in one piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wasn't it so lovely and high up? You can have it. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> well, here we are. Well, another quiz, Tizzy. Ooh, ready when you are. Uh, ready. Its horns are made of? Give it a think. I'll be back in a buzz. Do you know the answer? I forgot the question. Whoa, Jake, then it is you. Hey, it's great to have you back, buddy. Oh. Ready for the answer? The uh, question? Is, what was Here's it? the question and the answer. <laughs> the question. Do you know what a bighorn sheep's horns are made of? And the answer is keratin over bone. Keratin is the same. Thank you, Tizzy, for another quiz. And thank you, Ollie and Armstrong. Whoa, whoa. And merci to you, Eve. Au revoir. And a special thanks to Rocky the Bighorn Sheep and Robert the Red Deer. Bye. And to all you little animals out there, until next time... Keep on flapping, swimming, hopping... And seeing the world through the eyes of animals. Gee, Jake, I thought you knew everything. Oh, just a polar bear. Oh, yeah, but you're my polar bear. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.